Oh, hi there, my name's Beth, and this is the story of how I renovated my 1904 Dutch sailing barge. This week, more bilge painting. So you might remember a little while ago I showed you a hole in the hull. So before I paint it, what I really need to do is fill that hole. So I've got some epoxy metal here which will be perfect for the job. It doesn't have to be structural, it doesn't have to keep water out thankfully. It just needs to keep the hole plugged and to stop any water going down in there. So usually I would talk to you from outside as we were as we're out in the open, but it has been raining for days, days and days and days and days. It just won't stop raining. And um, there was one day when it didn't rain, and that was the day, thankfully, that I was doing the painting. So I checked the uh, the weather forecast uh, just to make sure that it wasn't going to rain uh, that day, and um, and then at least then we could open all the portholes. Um, so, and that night, me and Bertie stayed on a different boat, uh, which was really kind of the, the owner of the boat, uh, because the, uh, the paint fumes are just so toxic, they're really horrible, they really get on your chest. But fairly quickly, within sort of 24 hours or so, um, it, uh, they, they sort of vanish, really. There's a kind of slight lingering smell, but certainly the kind of the chemical reaction is really strong in the first, uh, the first 24 hours. Um, so I tried to sleep on board previously and I just couldn't. It, I was waking up in the night and it was like this kind of horrible gassy kind of smell. So um, so yeah, so we stayed stayed somewhere else. And, um, and then yeah, but we're back on board now and so we're just letting all this settle. So I have got all of the painting done that I, that of the, the hole that I can see now, the hole that I've exposed. Um, so if you remember a while ago I'd cut the floor um, uh, you know, up to uh, a particular part and removed all the floor up there. So my plan is, what I should have probably done is I should have moved, I should have cut the floor off a bit further up and that's where one of the walls, one of the internal walls are gonna be. So I'm gonna do that next. Um, well, I'm gonna start putting some floor down here so I can actually start to move around because there's loads of junk here that I need to move over there. So the next, I, the next plan is to try and get some floor down here and then I'm going to start to move everything um, uh, from here over there. Then I'm going to extend the bit that I've taken out a bit further and I'm going to paint that. And it means I can put the floor down past the internal wall and it means that I can put, stop putting some of the walls up. So this, after, this forward section, sorry, um, I will be able to put the walls along here and here. And that means I can form the bathroom uh, the kind of walls around the bathroom. So I'm just going to put the stud walls up and then I'm going to do the kind of internal of the bathroom. So it's going to look a bit weird like a film set I think. That you'll kind of be in this kind of sort of chaos but then you'll walk through a door and you'll be into a sort of hopefully finished bathroom. So I'm just going to put all my effort into trying and getting the bathroom done and it means then I can uh, I can have like a you know I have a shower and I can have the toilet and everything in there. And sink and stuff. So there's a few more stages that I need to get finished before I can actually have that running and then that includes 
um, getting all of the equipment, the Victron uh, inverter and battery manager, and also the isolation transformer, which I think I might have talked about before, but I'll go through when I've got it, when I can show you what it is. And also the batteries, six domestic uh, batteries, which are going to power my, uh, my, my um, onboard systems. So the 24 volt systems for all the light fittings, or the lights and the uh, the pumps and uh, the sort of, you know the water pump and the pump out pumping pumps, uh, they're all going to be powered on the 24 volt system from the batteries, but also they'll run through the inverter and that'll give me 240 volts uh, for my uh, or mains AC for my sockets. Um, but he's just behind there crying because he's eating his lunch and I haven't given him a treat yet, so we'll just have to wait. So, um, so then, uh, so I'll have all of those in. So next week is going to be slightly different because we're going to have to go on a road trip, you and me. Uh, we're going to have to go up to near, um, uh, well, near Birmingham, I guess, to collect all of that equipment. So I've got a van booked, so we're going to go on a bit of a road trip and go and get all of that stuff. But that means that I can start to try and fit those things. Now, I'm not going to initially um, wire up the 24 volt system because there's tons of work still needing to be done on that. Uh, if you remember ages ago, I think in that video, we start to install the wiring loom. And you might remember that it's just bundles of wire and they come to a point like there's only two wires coming out here, or at least one looped wire, and that's for one light socket. But on the other end, there's bundles of wires that I've got to then all make sense of and wire into the, the, the distribution panel, the switch panel. So, um, and also I need to wire them onto something as well. And down here, there's a cable for the macerator toilet and there's the pumps and everything. So I need all of those in place before I do that. And actually I don't even have the pumps yet because they're all on back order because everything is delayed at the moment. So uh, for those, it was hopefully gonna be the end of November, but it might, it might not be that time. Anyway, that's okay. Um, so I do need that to kind of get the bathroom wall finished. But what I, um, what I can do is I can install the inverter, I can install the batteries and have all that running. And that means I can run my 240 volt, my, um, my mains AC, if you like, uh, from the inverter or through the inverter anyway. And um, in the UK, we're kind of predicted to have some power outages over the winter. Um, and I'm, const I'm on shore power now and that's the only thing I've got. So if the shore power goes, then I lose power on board and that's my heating and everything. Heating, lighting, the full works. So I'll be in a kind of dark, cold boat. So I don't really fancy that very much. So I'm going to try and get the, in the, the inverter in and get the battery bank in. So um, for a start, the batteries need to be continually managed anyway, so they don't deteriorate. But also I'd like to have that, uh, that all set up so I can uh, have some sort of power redundancy. So if the shore power goes off, then I can run the, uh, still have mains power. Not 24 volt yet, but still the mains. So all the sockets will be on. Also, um, it means that I can have a uninterruptible power supply for my heating system. Now, I spoke to the heating engineer because the heating system does two things. It does the, it will do the central heating for the radiators, and that is a water-filled system. So the radiators all have water inside, just like a domestic uh, central heating system. And the boiler will um, will heat that, heat the water up, and it will circulate through, it'll pump it through, and warm up the radiators. It also has hot water and it's very much like a domestic system, um, but this is kind of off-grid version. Uh, so uh, the hot water um, needs to be set up with a pump, um, so that's pressurised. And the, the hot water system, uh, there'll only be one pump and that pressurises the system, it pressurises the cold water. And then the cold water will flow through the tap, but also through the uh, through the, the hot water system. And the reason I'm doing it, I don't have a hot water pump and a cold water pump, is because if one of the pump fails, like if the cold water pump fails and you only have hot water, that could be a bit dangerous. So they're just based on, on it. It's almost like a domestic system. You've got a pressurized water system, uh, but on the boat, I've got a tank and then I've got a pump, which establishes that pressure rather than it being pressurized by the water uh, company. So um, anyway, so I'll have a, an uninterruptible power supply to run my um, central heating system. Um, the central heating system I can run separately to the, uh, to the water system because I won't have those water pumps to connect to the system to pressurize the water. And I don't even have a water tank yet either. So that's another thing we've got to look at. Um, but I still can fill up my, uh, my central heating circuit 
and then put a couple of radiators on just probably a bit further up forward and then I've got some heat and it means that I can run heat off grid and I don't have to pay huge amounts for the um, for the electric heating which I'm doing now so that'd be good anyway so yeah um, long story short I need to go and collect all the the electrical equipment and I need to fit them and then I need to get my central heating working but also I need to fit the floors here and um, and that will mean that I can move around a little bit more. So I said that I would show you um, how the floors would work and I'll do you a brief demo now. So you remember back in that video um, when we uh, started to take these floorboards out, what a difficult job that was. And that was because these floorboards uh, had holes drilled through, pilot holes, and then there were screws through the board, uh, through the floorboard and into uh, onto the joist or through the joist of the hull um, and they are steel angle profile joists so the problem is that when you uh, if you're if you're bolting or screwing metal to metal or hard something to hard something then that's okay but when you're screwing something soft to something hard then the thing that's soft is always going to get destroyed and um, especially because the screws that went through here went into the joist and then it's damp underneath and rusty and they all rusted and they corroded. They rusted into the joists and also they, uh, they, be they became corroded themselves. So they were snapping and, and quite, quite bad, quite hard to take out. So yeah, so we had to cut them out with a hole saw. So these floorboards as well, they're beautiful, but they're not going back in, in the way that they were, because I had to cut them out. I had to cut them out to look down in the bilges and get all this sorted out. Um, but it means then these floorboards are, I have less uh, floorboards than I had before, or I have fewer usable ones. Um, so, um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, use these for other things, for like doors and trim and stuff like that. But also I'm hoping to have enough that I can cut up into smaller sections to make some kind of engineered parquet kind of flooring, so I can make smaller pieces which will fit together, and maybe down the uh, the passageway or something like that. That look really nice. But otherwise, the floors that I want to put down is are going to be more appropriate for the types of environments. So something that's kind of you know good for a, a more humid environment in the bathroom, and maybe even some carpet in the bedroom. I'm not sure. There's not going to be a huge amount of floor space, so maybe something nice and uh, soft in the bedroom, soft and warm. That'd be good. Anyway, so the floorboards aren't going to go down, but I'd like to show you how I am going to fit the floors. So imagine this is a piece of 18 millimeter ply and this is going to form my floor. Um, so if I put it in the same way as before, I would screw through the ply and into those angle profiles. But as I mentioned, that's hard to remove that later on. So there's a couple of changes I'm going to make to the process or a couple of approaches I'm going to take. Firstly, the ply subfloor is going to be 18 mil ply. The ply subfloor I'm going to put down first is only enough to support the walls. So if you imagine this is a section of the ply and then a wall, a stud wall is along here. I'm just gonna put a, a narrow section so that I can have enough to support the wall. That'll mean that I've got a huge big gap at each side or around that, but then I'm gonna put some more um, ply subfloor in those areas separately. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it means that later on, if I need to, I can remove these ply boards just by unscrewing them and take the entire thing up and essentially have access to my entire hull. Um, so obviously it's a bit of an invol involved task to kind of get all the floor up, but it's possible and I'm not gonna have to destroy anything because the most important thing on a boat is putting things in that can be removed later on. I know the, the ceiling is gonna be hard to remove, but <laughs> that's, the best I could do for that. It's possible though. But the floors, that's much more likely that I'm gonna to have to go down and check. So the first thing I'm gonna do, well, the, the final thing I'm gonna have is uh, some inspection hatches. So dotted all the way through the boats in little corners or under the bath and that kind of thing, I'm gonna have liftable hatches so I can look down and inspect. And now the builders are really nice. I can see if there's any changes. I can see if there's water ingress. I can see if there's any rust, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, so the hatches are important. Um, also, as I mentioned, that I'll be able to remove huge chunks or huge sections of the floor without disturbing the internal walls. And that'll be really important because I can't destroy the walls once I put them in again, because essentially that's just destroying the boat again. So it means that I can take all the floors up apart from a small section that supports the wall, what's underneath the wall. The other thing as well, I'm not gonna screw straight through the ply into the angle lines. I'm going to use 
a batten, my old favourite battens. Now maybe not a batten like this, I'm going to use a square batten instead. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, going to fix it along the side of one of the ribs that runs along the boat. I'm going to fix it along there, I'm going to drill holes in the side of the rib and then through those holes I'm going to um, fix this batten on with coach bolts. And they are, they look like screws, big screws, but they've got like a kind of nut on the end if you like. Um, and so you can put them in with a, with a um, spanner. Um, so I'm going to uh, fix battens there and the battens are there because I'm going to use those to screw through this ply and into the batten. So I'm screwing through wood and into wood and that means that it, it's going to cut down a little bit on, um, on this kind of movement and the squeaking but also it means that they're much easier to remove. It's much better I think to screw a soft material into a soft material because they can both kind of you know, bounce off each other if you like, or kind of flex with each other. So, so yeah, I'm going to have these battens along the side of the ribs, and then I'm going to have the um, the ply on top of that, and then screw through there. Also, on the tops of the uh, tops of the angle profile, while well, the old screws used to go through, I'm just going to put some joist tape to prevent a little bit of moisture transfer. Um, and so the joist tape will sit on top of the joist, and then the uh, the ply will go on top of it. But on the bottom of the ply, I'm going to paint all of these in a kind of waterproof paint, like a rubberized paint, a little bit like a garage paint. Um, so that will keep the bottom of the boards nice and dry. I'm not expecting water to be in the pillages, but I, potentially there could be some condensation. And even condensation, that's just as bad really for wood that's above it, because uh, it, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of ply you've got, marine ply or anything, it's going to eventually get into the wood and start rotting it. And that's when you start to get the, the kind of funny smells and the kind of like, you know, the, the sort of foosty smells. Um, and I don't want it to rot. So, um, so yeah, so a bit, a bit of waterproof paint um, and hopefully we'll keep the builders dry. But if they're not, for some reason, then at least it won't start attacking the wood. So that will be on the top. They will be screwed down with these battens. And then on top of that will be a um, an insulated layer, so like a layer, a thin layer of foam, and then on top of that will be some sort of engineered flooring. And by engineered flooring, I mean pieces that lock together with kind of, um, you know, those kind of grooves and uh, not like tongue and groove, um, because previously we had tongue and groove and that is just one way. So the boards can still move in and out with tongue and groove, but with an engineered floor, it kind of clicks into place. Also, it means that I can remove this engineered flooring later. So if I need to get down to the bilges, I can take it from the edge and just unclick it up. Um, okay, there might be some screws to remove, but not too many. So I can unclick it up, then I can remove the insulation layer and then I can unscrew the boards and lift them up if I need to. I'm not expecting to do that regularly, but I can do if I need to. So that's the plan with the, with the, the floor next. It'll be really nice to get the floor down as well because this actually is quite a source of cold on the boat um, because it's like a cold radiator because of course it's in the water and it's sort of eight millimeters of steel on top of uh, on top of the water so um so it is quite cold still so it'll be nice to get a bit of floor down then i'm going to move all my junk i'm going to resort it out i'm going to move it up forward uh, and then I'm going to extend the floor that I've taken out just a bit further forward. And then uh, it means that I can start to put the internal walls in for the bathroom. Um, and then I'll probably leave the floors for that for the time being. Uh, and then I'll, I'll start try and get the um, systems on board, try and get the bathroom all working and maybe even my bedroom sorted out. And then it means I've got lots more comfort. So if I can get half the boat, it's not really half the boat, maybe a third of the boat done, um, then that's uh, that's a real bit of progression forwards and uh, it'll bit make my life a lot more comfortable and then I can start to um, to move uh, further further aft and uh, and do the galley and the saloon or the spare room uh, the guest cabin the galley and the saloon um but uh, but yeah so at least I can kind of have half a boat that's quite nice so that's my plan Thank you so much for watching this week. I know this week seems to be a bit light on actually doing stuff, but the painting took so long and I compressed it down to 30 seconds because I really don't want to bore you just watching me painting. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.